What is up guys, Coach Hayden here, coming to you live from Steel, and today we're going to be discussing how often you should weigh yourself. Before going further into the subject, we need to establish some ground rules first. First of which is that this is very personalized and there's a lot of individual preference that can and does play into this. Not everyone needs to weigh themselves daily or needs to restrict themselves to one monthly weigh-in or every three months or whatever the frequency is. There's a lot of what you prefer to utilize as a tool to help you determine where your progress is. So these are all options. They have pros and cons, and that's what we're going to be going into today. First option that we have is daily measurements. So the thing about daily measurements, daily weigh-ins, is that they are a lot more prone to weight fluctuations. And most of these are known as white noise, or they fall within that category. If you take any other form of measurement, and you take lots of readings back to back very frequently, you're more prone to catching lots of changes that don't have anything to do with the result that you're seeking, mainly being fat loss. Uh, it's mainly the main driver of what makes people want to seek weight loss in the first place. So there's a lot of white noise that can be more common in daily measurements. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can unveil uh, some misconceptions that lots of people have around the scale. Um, so any changes in the scale that you might see are not necessarily good or bad. So let's take a practical example. Let's say that you weigh yourself on day one and you're 150 pounds. You weigh yourself the next day and you're 151.8. The day after that you're 149.2. And then on day four you gain it all back to 150. You might think at first glance that means that I gained a pound and then some change and then I lost down uh, almost a pound and then I regained it back. That's not what's happening. Fat loss doesn't occur that quickly. What this does mean is that there's a lot of changes in uh, body water, there's glycogen storage in your muscles, there's blood volume, other things like that which are mainly attributed to this white noise that we see with daily measurements. So keep that in mind and for that reason it is an eye opener to show you that the scale is not the end all be all. What daily measurements can do for you, however, is that it gives you the most accurate and or precise picture of where your weight is and where you want it to be. And what I mean by accurate is that when you take more measurements, you get a better idea of where you are right now within a given time frame. Uh, that can be more prone to fluctuations, as we talked about before, but it can give you more accurate and or precise, and precision being the relative uh, proximity of measurements to each other. So you can see the progression of where your weight goes. Um, so that's the benefits of daily measurements. Secondly, we have bi-weekly, which is twice a week. This is a couple steps away from daily measurements, so for that reason, it's less prone to fluctuations, so there's not as much white noise. But what this is, uh, on, for the most part, is that it's the most representative, generally speaking. That's because it's not very infrequent. Uh, we have twice weekly measurements. Um, so we get a pretty good picture of where you are without excess fluctuation. Now one thing just about weigh-ins in general, and this isn't specific to bi-weekly weigh-ins, but every time you step on the scale, you want to try to keep a couple of things constant. The time of day that you weigh yourself, so if you weigh yourself in the morning, after you've maybe had your morning coffee or before, or before you've eaten anything, if you've already gone to the bathroom, those kinds of things will correct for inconsistencies that can also cause fluctuations. So try to keep everything the same, the same time, use the same scale. Uh, that way, the kinds of changes that you might see on the scale are actually representative of the result that you're seeking. So bi-weekly can be the most representative and it can correct for these fluctuations. This is what I would recommend for most people uh, on a general, on a, in a general sense. Uh, it's not restricted to Everyone has to do this, but it is a good guideline. Thirdly, we have weekly. So this is one step back from bi-weekly, so we only have one weekly measurement. This is fairly representative because now we have four measurements per month. It can give you a general plot line of where your progress is. It's not the most representative as we can't account for changes within the week, but it's still pretty good. It somewhat corrects for fluctuations because it is still um, more frequently than monthly, which we'll get into in a second, or even less frequently than that. Um, so it does, still does a pretty good job at why we use the scale. Lastly, we have monthly. Now the thing about monthly measurements is that it provides you general landmarks, overall major uh, 
guidelines for where you are within a larger time period. So you have four weeks long of your diet, your exercise, and those overall fluctuations of white noise built into that time period. And then you're seeing where all of that is leading you by the time you get to the fourth week of the month. So it can be pretty good, but if you're weighing yourself less frequently in this kind of category, and it kind of applies to these other ones as well, to where as the frequency goes down, the necessity to use other tools like how you look in the mirror, pictures, uh, measurements, things like that, become more important because we need some other way to keep uh, the weigh-ins in check uh, by using another measurement tool. So just going over things briefly as we talked about in categories, uh, for weigh-ins in general, you want to try to keep things the same for your weighing at the same time using the same scale. That way the measurement tool error margins will be kept the same and they'll correct for themselves as you take measurements. Going over the four categories, you have daily measurements, more prone to weight fluctuations, which is okay because it's an eye-opener that fat loss is not always reflected in those small changes. It's the most accurate, but it is more meticulous than these other frequencies. Bi-weekly tends to be the best way to get an accurate picture of where your progress is within the week and beyond, and it corrects for these kinds of fluctuations, given that we keep all those other things like keeping the time the same using the same scale, keeping all those things constant. Weekly is a little less reliable, still pretty good. It corrects for a lot of those fluctuations, but bi-weekly tends to be better for most people, but this is definitely a viable option for you. Monthly is definitely the least frequent out of our list here. It gives you general landmarks, posts for where you are within your overall diet and training regime, and the fluctuations are most likely to be kept um, within those measurements. Uh, which isn't necessarily a problem if you do other things like take pictures, measure yourself, uh, and things like that. So, brief overview of how often to weigh yourself. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.